All right, I think we need to get back on track. Let's. <laughs> we've got this next matchup, Alpine Esports going up against Mirage, also known as Omelette. Guys, I'm going to give this to you so that you can cast the match, and that's I'm done for today. Guys, take it away. Bye-bye. All right, well, thank you so much, Jim. The Omelet Man. All right, Omelet Man. So, again, we're getting ready to get right into this one. Alpine versus Omelet. We oh, all yeah. know how to make an omelet, but do you know how an omelet plays? See, that's, that's, that's a question for you. Turtle, how are you feeling about this one? We're getting ready. We're going to hop right into it, but let me know your thoughts. You know, I'm a, I'm a little bit confused here, just a tiny bit, because, you know, I'm, I'm aware of most of these players, but when it comes down to, you know, up-and-coming players who have made it through the Rival Series, you know, we've got Alpine who are going to the RLCS. These guys, you know, on paper, you think they're going to take, you know, at least have some kind of advantage, the edge of the other players, but they've got Lion Blaze. Lion Blaze, I casted a couple of his 1v1 matches um, from Salt Mine 2, and this man is somebody to fear. Lion Blaze has the mechanics, the skill to literally take his entire team, put him on his back, so I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people might uh, presume just based off of standings alone. But this is definitely a good uh, deciding factor of who really is that underdog roster and who has potential to explode onto the scene. I like that. Yeah, so getting this one underway here, Alpine. Again, Percy, Jordan, and Magic Bear. Haven't had the best results, but we are seeing them come in with signs of Ooh. life. There's Percy, a banger of a shot to open this up. And this is one of the best ways that you can transition on defense. It was so clean. A giant clear all the way up to your first man who's actually rotating. He has confidence in that clear going forward. Percy's ready to overtake and then just have a nutty redirect. That was clean and it was easy for Alpine. Yeah, and a questionable turnaround from Freshness too. Sitting with 53 boots right next to Percy. I guess he just didn't believe Percy was going to put that shot on. But that's one of the players from Alpine you have to pay attention to. Percy known we're putting on some really tough shots, and we see him with one. He's up again. Flip reset. We'll go, oh. and Lion Blaze will get the stop. And from the few plays that I have actually seen from Percy, I have not really watched too much of this squad together. But Percy already, you can see the mechanics. Flip resets after flip resets. Magic Bear getting one there, too. But Percy, he's going to be that aggressor. You can already tell with his positioning, the way he likes to stand under the ball. He's going to be trying to force out some awkward 50-50s and make the defense jump. So it's really going to be a test for if they're going to at least take the bait against Percy. Okay, so although Amla tried to push downfield, they still weren't able to come up with anything on offense. It's pretty much been more, mostly Alpine as this one pinches off of the side while Lion Blaze will go up looking for a shot. There's oh. the demo from Luke, but Magic Bear, goal line save to save the play. Solid demo, good attempt, lots of space opened up, but really that third man defense was too clean on the rotation. And so far, it has been a battle of that midfield space. It feels like Alpine, they have a lot more possession. They're stealing the corner boost more. But Mirage, aka Omelet, are, are doing a good job of sometimes breaking out, but they can't seem to maintain any uh, possession or even boost. Omelet, again, trying their luck here. Luke puts a shot on, just hits oh. the bar of the post. It'll go the other way. Percy will try to take this to midfield. But Freshness will pick it up now. Jordan all alone gets a good clear off into the corner. Magic Bear dodges a demo and is going to try to make a block here as well. And Alpine do hold on as we approach the bottom half of game number one. Very aggressive on offense has been this Alpine squad. But uh, we have seen signs of life from o Omelet when they are on the offensive end as well. Yeah, I like the fact that we're not seeing any hesitation from both rosters, honestly. It feels like... Whenever either of these teams get some form of possession, they are not scared to throw everything they have forward. And that creates for at least a much more entertaining series because nobody really wants to play that defensive role. You can see a lot of big booming clears. Everybody's trying to get you know, a risky play where we can throw multiple players forward. So the series is going to come down to really whose rotation is going to break at least the fastest on defense. As my Siri just popped up. Look at what you're doing, Daz. Yeah. Making my Siri go off, bro. Hey, I mean, that's, that's not my problem. You know what else isn't the problem? Jordan getting demoed by Luke for Lion Blaze. A play downfield here, and Luke and Fresh is playing front man. Jordan, he just had, there was just nothing he could do there. He had, he had the whole defense, or excuse me, the whole offense trying to get him just completely killed on the field. He had nowhere to go, no space. Two players from Omelette were looking for that demo while Lion Blaze, the one's main, had so much space to work with. Even if that demo didn't come out, I probably would have expected a goal either way. 
Yeah, so the bump comes out. Jordan. We'll try to get the clear downfield. It'll be blocked by Freshness. Now there's a chance here. As Freshness gets a demo. Lion Blaze looks for the shot. Luke oh. redirect. Is it going to go in? It will. What a play from Luke. This is an insane touch. Look at this. From the back wall, you can see he recovers, then gets that wraparound touch. That, that is insane. That's so clean to look at. Luke making it, it seems so easy, but managing to have a touch like that and still maintain momentum going forward to go into the net, that's crazy. Great mechanical skill showing out from Luke to get behind that one and pays off big time as they have the lead here. Alpine Esports down by one as they look to try to get back into this game. We're approaching the final minute of gameplay here, but it looks like Omelette, they are not stopping. Ball off to the side. Magic Bear tries to put it up. Jordan straight down towards Percy. Lion Blaze will try to look for the clear, but it will be sent off to Luke. Now Percy taking his time. Gets the dodge oh. in. Has Jordan in an assist, but Luke an easy read for the cutout and it will clear it away. Still seems like Alpine are getting promising chances, though. I like the fact that it's 35 seconds left. They have a lot of at least time here to get one or two solid opportunities and they're still going for passes they're not panicking at all so at least it gives me a little bit of hope that they can find themselves back into this game Percy doing a great job of being aggressive but the opportunities <gasps> haven't been the best the physical play isn't there we almost saw a bump attempt but it wasn't enough now 15 seconds left they need something Daz that, was, that seemed like it was their best shot too Percy had the flip reset it was on target but like you said the bump didn't work out this can be the final drive, but with that clear, it might be all but over. Jordan tries to keep it in play. Percy's going to turn here on it. Needs to keep this one up off the oh. wall. Lion Blaze with the clear away, and that will be game one to go an omelet. That was so close. What an attempt from what felt like at least a good opportunity on that demo play, and you at least compare both strategies on offense. You know that omelet was getting way more involved with the physical plays, the aggression was pretty evenly matched on both sides, but the only edge that Omelette or AKA Mirage had was that physical side of things. Other than that, it, so, it felt so close. That's what I was talking about. You know, normally on paper, you expect Alpine to come in here. They're going to the RLCS. We expect to see them come out on top. But, you know, uh, Omelette, a lot of these guys, you look at their names individually. They have so much skill. And then even the mechanics earlier from Luke, that shot, you have to talk about Ooh. that, Daz. Oh, yeah, it was so nice. The fact that he was in position as well, that was a necessary touch to make, too. He had a defender yeah. right behind him. So he needed to, you know, obviously make some type of touch. But the fact that he put that in and the ball was, like, still rolling in on target, and that just shows, like, how much Omelette are ready for the series, how much they want to play today. Yeah. So big shout-out to Luke, but also Lion Blaze as well. So many, like, four saves, four shots, an assist. Like, he had 100% goal participation, and he was just a monster yeah. on defense as well. So, definitely a well-earned win there for them. I mean, he felt so consistent with the clears as well. Lime Blaze, I noticed a lot of times whenever it would go off the backboard, it felt like he was reading those uh, without really any mistake. It felt like whenever he's pushed up against, his, uh, against the wall with his back, he can hit those clears so easily. Even the last uh, final seconds, he was the one who got that clear to get it out and to have the ball at least touch the ground, denying Alpine from getting the buzzer beater. So, Lion Blaze, he can do it on the offense. But it's that defense that really shines through whenever he's playing. So with game two on Manfield, we'll see what Alpine have in the tank. Almost oh. a quick pass play blocked out. It'll be Jordan with the follow-up. Won't be able to get it through, so it'll go the other way. A quick start right now for Alpine, but now they have to play defense, and Magic Bear will play it off to the side. This will be Percy looming, waiting for a chance here. Freshness, he has Luke. But he's oh. got to do it himself. The shot goes in, and that's the first goal of the game. And I love the spatial awareness. And when I look at these players, I think, where are they going to take this ball, and how are they going to find that space? A lot of times, they won't think about taking up the wall, going for the ceiling shot, because it takes a little bit too long. But he noticed there was space, realized the awareness uh, from other players and where the defense was positioned, took it up the wall, and he got a free shot out of it. So now, Ana with the first one here. And it'll be sent back into their box as Alpine are looming here. Magic Bear going to turn on this one. Has Percy in behind, but now Percy has to buy some time for Jordan. Plays it towards the wall. Joe Freshness looking for the pre-jump. It'll be cleared away. Luke will turn it into a shot, and Magic Bear will come up in time to make the save. And that's one scary thing about this Mirage offense. Somebody is always in position 
to capitalize on a mistake or at least be on the receiving end of a pass. I'm not seeing any of these midfield hits go unanswered. It seems like they always have a player, whether or not there is boost on the field for them to take, they are in position. So it doesn't even matter if they're getting starved out. It seems like they're picking up pads rather nicely. Alpine can't find a way to starve them out and make them panic on defense. So right now it just feels like a battle of who's going to get really that solid opportunity from a passing lane because it feels like Mirage are not going to break on something simple like a good pass. They're looking for a way to get past this Alpine defense, trying to get a second goal here as Omelette again fighting for midfield control. But Ooh. here's Jordan, almost found the top left, but still blocked away or just barely off target, I should say. Now's a chance here to go the other way. Luke on the ball. Soft touch, Lionblade is a little too fast there, just couldn't read the ball. Luke again will try to set up freshness, it's again, just slightly out of position. And it'll lead to them losing that offensive possession. We'll see if they can get it back as the transition comes through. A great cut from Percy, but Magic Bear will take his time. Pushing this one into the omelet in as Alpine. Oh, they're making the push. Percy. Pass one, freshness off to the side. Who's there? It's gonna be Magic Bear. Double. Does he have the double? Magic Bear will find the double tap to tie this game up. I was so concerned at first. I saw the open net miss for Magic Bear, but then he barely had enough boost to keep going. He used all of it in the tank to get that double touch, feathering it around the corner, making sure he can at least be above the ball to hit it down. The defense finally broke. And that's what I was talking about for Omelette. It felt like their rotations were on point. It just came down to that double commit. One simple mistake, which we haven't seen too much, but Alpine, fortunately enough for them, they're there to capitalize. This has got to be a big momentum booster here for Alpine. Yeah. We know they're down by one in the series. The double tap from Magic Bear shows some signs of life. They have a recipe here. And now they just have to follow it. Freshness will get the clear downfield. And Percy, he's been cutting out a lot of passes lately, just eliminating space. And there was another one. This one will be fresh. It has Lion Blades looming, but Lion Blades a little too late there, so Jordan will take control. Flick over. Percy's up, but Luke, he's there first. He sends it over to Freshness. The clear not that good, so it'll be Magic Barrier attempting to go up again. Again, tie game here between these two. Percy looking to set that midfield. It'll float down, but so far you can see just kind of like that momentum boost from Alpine. They're more aggressive on offense. They have more possession. They're keeping this yeah. on the omelet in as they try to set up another opportunity. There's the demo, and there's the shot from Jordan. Alpine Esports pick up their second goal. I was just about to mention the fact that we're seeing more physical plays now from Alpine on the offense. We just saw a demo even earlier. I've been watching Lion Blaze's perspective. He was getting bumped all over in net. So Alpine, they're stealing the boost and now taking a tactic from that first game into the game two where they're gonna go for the bumps and this time they hold possession, they hold the pressure. Everything is really, at least in their favor, the ball is in their court, Daz, and things are looking so much better. Like you said, a huge surge of energy for them, but then Luke, okay, he's gonna shut me up. And there's Luke again with the response here from Omelette. It's off the pass from Fresh, it's into some open space, Luke. That oh. soft touch behind the defender who's covering the top left. And it's just enough here for Amla. Um, they, again, equalize a minute, 20 seconds left on the clock here. As it just feels like both teams have decided to wake up in game number two. It's one thing to get a powerful shot on net that's just, you know, has too much force behind it. So it's obviously going to go in. But Luke, his, his shots this entire series have been so precise the accuracy is really what's been amazing to me normally i you know i'll see a lot of great timing on the flip so they get a lot of power and that's what makes a good shooter but for luke at, at least for him what he shines through with is the accuracy this man really can hit the ball so precisely he has that finesse edge to him that makes him such a deadly striker uh compared to most other people on the field and magic bear will try to put a shot on hold on alpine they're on the attack here but luke We'll turn this one into a quick transition. Percy on the goal line. Control needed here. This Percy's looking for another chance. There's the control again. The shot. Magic oh. Bear. Oh, he'll get a little bit of extra sauce on that one. Alpine take the lead. Speaking of sauce, look at look at the delay here from Percy. He saved his flip, wrapped around the ball, hit it right out to Magic Bear. That is a beautiful pass. Magic Bear had the confidence in him to stay mid. That pass wasn't even directly out uh, into the midfield. It was actually towards the net a bit more, so I expected maybe more contact. But with how 
much of a, of a fake that really was from Percy off the wall to save that flip, there was no stopping him. With final 13 seconds here, Alpine Esports, they have a one goal lead. The ball pinches into the omelet in. Lion Blaze will try to get a clear. Freshness with a demo. Luke has to control it. Oh, maybe. He can't get it to midfield in time. Alpine will take game two. And that's what happens when they implement that physical play that worked for them so well in game one uh, towards the end. We didn't see that at all until those final few seconds, actually. Mirage, if they had just kept that game uh, plan a little bit earlier, maybe they would have had a chance here. But Alpine, a big comeback thanks to those physical plays and also that last second pass from Percy. I thought maybe Mirage were going to be able to climb out of that, that game. But no, Alpine just shut him up. Finesse. Sauce. Yeah. Words used to describe this game. That's right, baby. As, uh... Especially Luke. That man is insane. I don't, I don't know how he has such an accurate sh uh, shooting. Those two touches, those two goals, yeah. I I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, I mean, Luke doing a good job. Alpine also responding the way they have been with the control. Again, we saw Percy, who was the main shooter there in game number one, but he didn't score at all in game two. He set up a couple of yeah. plays, but Magic Bear was the one that stepped up. And that's what I talk about, this team being kind of a triple threat at the same time. Whereas if Alpine do play like we've seen them play when they were on their way to the RLCS, it's really tough for a team to stop them. And we're seeing these little signs of life there from this particular roster right. now you know as we get set up here for game number three turtle i mean who, who's really if you could pick two standouts one from each team uh who, who are your standout players who are your standout players right i'm gonna now? have to go with honestly you you know you mentioned the fact that you know we didn't see too many goals from percy the, the guy we expect to get a lot of shots on i'm gonna have to still go with percy you know that pass really sold me i thought that in the first game he was opening up opportunities uh for his team the most and honestly that's what i want to see from the first aggressor on the team as the server actually went down we want to see that first guy who's actually positioned most forward open up the opportunities not off of you know maybe having crazy shots on net but just being aggressive and forcing 50. so usually you'll see somebody who's you know always trying to be aggressive always trying to get in the face not be the main scorer but instead have the people who are you know second and third man rotating in to get those follow-up shots so that's why i think percy he is the backbone of this roster then you know we flip the script and we look at luke I think that him, his accuracy is so clean. But then I'm looking at Lion Blaze in most particularly because Lion Blaze, right. I think the way he controls the pitch with his dribbles, his 1v1 skills, I think it's going to be Lion Blaze versus Percy and how they can set up their team, honestly. I feel I, I feel that because we've seen, you know, like we had talked about with the shot that uh, Magic Bear scored, you called out the fact that Percy was the one who set it up. Yeah. You called out that delayed touch that gave him just a little bit of extra space and control and the way he was able to get that right towards Magic Bear right in front of the box. That's just not an easy feat. So the fact that, you know, we're seeing that, we're seeing Luke put in those extra efforts, whether it's getting the demo plays or whether it's getting uh, these soft touches to redirect the ball into the net, all these things are really big factors here that contribute to whether or not oh that was a that was a, sh a shuffle uh, <laughs> uh, we just wanted to see that nice transition again because it looks you know, so good it is clean it is clean we'll see it again in a moment oh there we go Ooh, I'm about to give me a deck of cards in a minute it's i need pretty. that deck whoever made the aesthetics for this entire tournament a plus it's fantastic it is it is. I love the style. I feel like I'm in California when I'm really in my room with the air conditioner. Right? <laughs> this, Dude, is what, this is what we love. That's what we need to do. It's it's too hot in Arizona, bro. Like I, I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now because I love blasting the AC because mm. I, I don't go outside. Daz, do you go outside? No, only when I walk my dog. That's about it. Nah, you can just you can just walk your dog inside, take him through your rooms, man. I don't know what you're doing. You're not on I'm the not. same wave as me. How, you know the reason you walk the dog is so the dog uses the bathroom, right? Well, all right, I didn't think this through. Okay, let's 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 change the topic. Change the topic. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't think it through. Right, right, uh, you know what? There might be messes, messes that I need to clean up. My dog's actually laying down right here. Uh -huh. I need to get out. See, this is the problem here, Des. You know what? Like, like, like I said, let's segue. Let's go back into the game. Back into the game. Back into the game. So, <laughs> well, let's talk a bit more about <laughs> Alpine and Omelie here, right? We're about to get the game number three on the way. We just were getting the lobby set up. Server went down, so we're bringing it back up. Uh, coming into this one. Things the pace of the game definitely seemed like it was getting faster and faster towards the end of game number two, especially. It all started with the double touch from Magic Bear that really opened things up. And then you had the response from Omelette later on. And then it, after that, it just became a constant transition battle. One of the big things I've paid attention to from Alpine has been their ability 
to cut off that midfield pass lane. Uh, Percy does a fantastic job of doing it. You'll see him constantly yeah. in midfield cutting things off. And that's going to be one of the big things is how Omelette are going to be able to necessarily get this ball downfield and set up more opportunities. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly why I picked Percy as, you know, my main factor towards how these guys are going to be playing, how this roster is going to be competing, because it all comes down to him. He is that aggressor. That means in the midfield, he's got to get in the face of them and try and cut out those passes. So if Percy's on point, which it looks like he is, he got a demo right there already, you know, speaking signs to the fact that he's feeling himself. So this is, so far, going to be all up to him to stop a lot of that possession. He's doing a great job. Let's see if he can continue here in game three. Good save from Jordan. Jordan looking for Percy here, but freshness. Oh, that's a quick cut. Oh my mm. goodness, he does it all by himself. What? Freshness clean with the opening I was the, goal. I was in the middle of drinking something, and then freshness hits me with this. I had absolutely zero expectation this going in. The angle is nuts. He's falling from above the ball. He hits it with the top of his car and still manages to hit it. Freshness. He's now come on my radar because I wasn't even thinking about, you know, his effect on the field, but after that shot, that's crazy. So, starting things off on the right foot, I'm with shaking off the game two loss as they push this one downfield. It'll end up being into the corner. Goes to Luke. Hitting that off to the side, but he's going to control it, buying Lion Blaze some time to get involved. This Lion Blaze will pop this one up into the Alpine end. It'll be Magic Bear to Jordan. Jordan tried. Magic Bear wanted to be fast to that one, but that was Luke's ball all day as both of these teams volleying in the midfield looking for possession. Lion Blaze will get the flip reset past Jordan. And those are, the, again, the mechanical players here. Players like Magic Bear, Percy, Lion Blaze, you know, even Freshness for an example. They're able yeah. to just consistently move the ball downfield just with using their mechanics. These little double taps on the sidewall, the flip resets are so important when it comes to giving your team more possession. Right, and this is such a great series to watch in general because not only are these guys rivals, they all know each other so well, but we've got somebody like Freshness who can pop Wait. off at any given moment. Wait, no, this was his touch. And it bounces out, and I think Luke bumped Magic Bear into the ball with that demo to get the goal. But then it didn't even, it looked like Luke had a touch. But from the angle of the replay, it must have been a pool shot, right? Yeah, yeah, because he hit Magic That's... Bear as he was demoing him. I'm dumbfounded. That was, I don't even know what I just witnessed. You know, I, when, you, when you see teams give the extra effort like this, one of the things I like to say is they just, they want it, you know? Sometimes you just say they want it more depending on how, how extra of an effort it is. But so far, it's been a two-goal difference here between Mirage and Alpine. I'd say two, oh. but it's now one as Percy will pick one up. And these guys always have an answer for the other team whenever they go down. We haven't seen a huge gap, at least in the lead so far this entire series. It's been kept close time and time again. Percy being aggressive, always getting in the face, and he's there to capitalize off of another mistake. So it feels like, you know, both these teams so evenly matched. I love what I'm witnessing. It, it's not really up to these defenses who are really breaking down constantly not many mistakes we're seeing but rather beautiful mechanical plays a lot of crazy angles that we saw earlier from freshness this gameplay is, is really starting to shape up so as lion blaze tries to play that through it'll be luke looking for the double he'll find oh. it luke showing us something here and none of these goals they're getting have been easy they have had to work so hard for this and you can see Ooh. luke a banger of a double tap off the backboard. He read it, the finesse from the man himself. This guy, he's so accurate. The finesse. That fro in the chat. <laughs> you know, I hope yeah. Dapper's watching. I hope so too, man. Oh, man. All right. 3-1 is the score. 3-1 in favor of Mirage slash Omelet. As they are taking it to Alpine Esports in this game three. Alpine trying their best to break out as they're in the midfield right now looking for a chance. It'll be Percy, no, Jordan with the cutout. It cuts him out, so now they both have to retreat as the clear comes down. Oh, Luke, oh, hold bro. on, Luke. What oh. is the, I don't even know what this man ate for breakfast. The touches he's getting. Look at him go, he's not he done. He doesn't stop, he doesn't he's stop. He's not done. Another one, <laughs> another the, one. The man does not stop driving forward and hitting these incredible touches. He puts in a shot. Did you see that touch earlier, like five yeah. seconds ago? 
What was that? I, I didn't think that redirect was going that in that angle. And I then the fact that he to do that. the fact that he recovered and had enough boost to take another shot right after, like the man is on fire today. Magic Bear tries to get a quick goal to respond, but it is blocked out. So now Alpine are trying to slow things down on the offensive end. It'll be Magic Bear once again playing this one close. But Luke, the speed as he clears it downfield, has a look at the net, tries oh. to get a soft touch. Freshness will clean it up. And now Mirage Omelette just running away with this. And this is the first big lead that we've seen from a team where I talked about how they're so evenly matched. But now Mirage starting to run away with it. You can see a lot of that possession, the aggression, starting to pay dividends for him because, you know, somebody gets that save, somebody can have a follow-up there. But so long as you have control of that boost, you're most likely always going to win that second touch or that second 50-50 that follows up after the shot. So Mirage, all they got to do is just run the clock down, and this should be an easy win. we got to highlight my boy Freshness as well. You know, he, he'd been quiet so far this series, but here in Game 3, he has popped off that. Man, we were talking about Lion Blaze getting into this one and at this point the pop-off we've seen from Luke and Fractionist. Oh, it's too nice. It, I mean, they are just on another level this game. At the, Luke, I feel like they're just trying to figure out who can get the most points yeah. now. Well, they always have somebody to receive a clear, which is why I really enjoy watching their gameplay. You know, you can see somebody, you know, like from Alpine right there. We saw a giant clear come out, but there's no boost. The midfield is being controlled almost entirely by Mirage. So whenever a big clear does come out, nobody has the boost to even catch up to a clear. And you can just continue to move off that momentum. Mirage keeps the possession, and they're going to starve you out and then force a mistake. So with the final 30 seconds left, Alpine, I mean, they, gotta, they really got to dig deep coming into this yeah. next game. This is way too much momentum given over to Mirage right now. They've just been... Again, playing a really clean game of Rocket League. They've been very creative, too, on the offensive end. Yeah. And they're outpacing them, to be honest. They're outpacing them. They're, they're faster to the ball now. We just it, it just seems like that <clears throat> energy you saw from Magic Bear in game two yeah. has just been gone. Well, that's exactly why I think they need to slow it down. I think this is when they need to change up their play style with this huge performance. Uh, from Mirage here in game three. This is now where we need to see Alpine slow it down. I want to see them control the pace a bit more. If they can't win out on those clears and they can't find somebody to have a redirect, you have to stall and waste time so that your players can get in position or get boost either from pads or the corners because you're not really controlling the midfield boost. So you need to have whoever's receiving that or trying to go forward with a clear, dribble it. Keep the ball low, keep it down, force a 50, and then move from there on because you are getting outpaced, outshot, and really, uh, the boost control is not in your favor as well against Mirage. So you just got to slow it down, Daz. Yeah, slow things down. Also, though, <clears throat> that, that midfield control that, you know, I pointed out from Percy just didn't really seem like it was there that game. Yeah. Where, you know, the, the cutouts from midfield, Mirage had so much room to work with here as uh, they were able to completely just make those transitions into the air. So it looks like, again, for Alpine, coming into this one just kind of going back to the drawing board here uh as i mean definitely one of the things to players to watch out for in this next one has to be luke i mean uh, eight shots oh, yeah. two goals two assists and he mixes it up too whenever he gets those aerial touches nobody expects that you know it yeah, yeah. throws the defense for a world to the point where they have to re-rotate around the ball because nobody expected him to get that angle in the first place so he's a huge factor and not only wasting time but keeping that offense going for mirage yeah, so getting ready to get this next game underway here. And this could be the last one of the series if things keep going in favor of Mirage. They've started off on the right foot now, and they want to continue to keep things going that way as Luke starts this one. Looking to try to set something up. It'll be Percy with a clear downfield towards Magic Bear. Magic Bear, does he have the read? Ooh. He actually does. And will he get the bump on Luke? No chance. Jordan will put a shot pass, and he'll get up the first goal for Alpine. And keep your focus on Magic Bear. Look at that dunk on Lion Blaze. He read everything and then went for the demo play, opened up that entire field for, Ma or for Jordan, excuse me, to have a lot of time and just precisely shoot it into the corner. Nice little slot in. And Magic Bear... He's a little bit upset with that with that last game lead. He wants to switch things up, and he's doing it with fashion. So potential game five here. If Alpine can hold on to the lead, Jordan off the ceiling. 
playing it close. Looking for the bump on Luke, but Luke was up into the air very fast. Another win on the challenge for Luke. As he's again trying to buy some room for Lion Blaze, the shot will come through, but off target, and Percy will have that save. Oh, that's another clear as well that gets answered from somebody from Raj. Look at the way that they're keeping this ball in, and then it leads to a shot on net. Is it going to go in? Percy must, must have the save, but Lion Blaze, it's an easy dunk for him. And I was just talking about how somebody's always in front of the clear for Mirage. That's what keeps that possession forward. And Mirage, they're just starving him out. Yeah, at this point, they're just being super aggressive on the ball, pushing Alpine in a really tough position. And Alpine have not been able to find an answer just yet. I mean, they started things off on the right foot, but things are back equalized as Lion Blaze tries to carry this downfield. It'll be Magic Bear looking for that midfield touch, but it was come to fresh. Just he puts a shot on, forcing Percy to come back and make a save. Alpine. Looking for a chance here, but every time someone is in the midfield, it's going to be Lion Blaze here again. Looking for the 50, it won't go his way. Somebody's always in front of these clears. Luke again, keeping that pressure forward, winning that midfield challenge. And then now you can see freshness. Look at how many times. And then Luke still has time to rotate on the other side as the aggressor and maybe get a touch. It feels like things from Alpine are too slow, and they need to at least bring this ball down and waste time to get boost because... Things are not going their way. They are just hammering this backboard, waiting for a mistake to happen. Again, another play off the backboard. Lion Blaze shot blocked oh. from Magic Bear, and Percy will get the clear out. Fresh just with a turn here. And very quick to it, too. Magic Bear was up fast. Now Luke going to do this one all by himself. Is he going to do it? Let's see oh. it, Luke. Almost a chance. Fresh just will try to keep it in play, but Magic Bear will send that one off to the side as Alpine are still keeping this a tied game for now, but the pressure from Mirage is definitely noticed. Yeah, I mean, something is bound to break. Either we're going to see a beautiful counterattack from Alpine where they can catch somebody off guard, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It doesn't feel like this rotation wants to really make a mistake or have a double commit because it's too clean. They are very, very well organized. The communication has got to be on point for everyone from Mirage, seeing as they don't let up. And this offense is not slowing down anytime soon. You can even see Luke in the corner there if you pay attention. He actually managed to get that boost and starve him out even more. So we're just waiting for this defense to crack. And they're holding as far as they can. Infield pass. Freshness oh, shot. It. And that'll go in. Mirage take the lead. Something had to fall whether or not we liked it because it felt like for that entire time, Alpine couldn't get any passes connected. Nothing whatsoever. So Mirage... A couple of feeds into the middle, a couple of shots on the backboard. Eventually going to stretch out that defense, and it's a clean game for Mirage. Things are getting creative, and it's just overall a much more solid performance. So Alpine, they've got so much work to do, but it's still possible. Two minutes left, Daz, they have what it takes. Oh, man, but they got to stop those shots from Luke. Super aggressive, yeah. almost finding their way in. That one's going to be high, and Luke, no respect on Jordan, even though he's on that back wall, still goes up for it. Jordan will clear it out to Percy. Chance, but oh. Percy can't find the shot. Almost an opportunity. They still have possession, but it's not going to last for long. Freshness up. Luke with the pop there to throw off one. Percy takes his time. Plays oh, it slow. It. And it'll pop out to the side. Jordan wants to keep it in play, but with that whiff, I mean, Mirage should be able to clear this out. Oh, Maybe. I say that, and they almost get scored on. A quick chance there in front. Percy still looming. Looking for Jordan. Another play. Finally, this one hits the midfield. Magic Bearer keeps it in. Gets a demo. Tries once more. They're keeping it in on that midfield line. Alpine, a ball finally gets away with them or from them as they have to start all over again from their own half. And those were the best opportunities we had seen so far from Alpine this entire game for what felt like a defense that was continuing to crumble. They actually managed to at least for a little bit get some time on the other side of the field here. But they didn't come away with a single goal, especially after you managed to get a couple demos, some good possession. You need to come away with something because if you give Mirage some time to at least reorganize yourselves, it's going to be a tough obstacle to climb over. So Lion Blaze again making an attempt. It'll be freshness. Oh, he won't have control of that. Lion Blaze will win that challenge. Again, another look here, but Luke with some space. 20 seconds now. Alpine need to make something happen here very quickly, but look at the, the pressure coming out from Mirage. They're going to stay on top of it. Percy can't get a touch there. Final 10 seconds. Magic oh. Bear keeps that one up high. 
A demo comes through. Oh, they've got space. They can do it. Yeah, Jordan just has to keep control here. Keeps that one in. But look at Lion Blaze with the read. He pre-jumps <laughs> him. And he ends the series there. Mirage taking it in four. Lion Blaze. What, what was that pre-jump? That was nuts. I have never really had the confidence to go for that. It's zero seconds. You got to play it a little bit safe. But Lion Blaze decides to throw out that entire idea of keeping it safe and just pre-jumps and denies the clear. It's that kind of play and that kind of, uh, I guess, a lack of hesitation. I can't really think of the word because it feels like these guys just don't care. They have full confidence on the field knowing for sure that they have had all the possessions. So they don't even need to back down in the final seconds, Daz. Yeah, they don't. And, I mean, for that, that will do it here for the series. Mirage, take it. And coming into this wow. one, I mean, the first couple of games of this series, Turtle, was definitely just back and forth. But at, at this point, like, Mirage, once they got warmed up, I mean, we saw that game three. They were looking like monsters. And again, just one of these teams to keep an eye out on. It, it, the, the gap here is so close. And yeah. you're just starting to see teams who are really – wanting these opportunities start to make statements with their rosters. I mean, they have got to be on your radar right now uh, with that performance and especially the mechanics that we saw. Lion Blaze was doing a good job of kind of keeping it a little bit uh, grounded a bit. We didn't see Lion Blaze do anything too crazy, but that's because he was kind of holding it back on defense. So, so far, all three of these guys are really just a three-headed monster. I mean, any outlet or any... I guess, approach to the ball, you're going to have somebody's play style there to match you. So they're going to go ahead and go on to actually play against uh, Stromboli, which is beautiful. Um, but that was just a fantastic series. And it was good to see a lot of these underdogs and people that we see up and coming in the scene try and make a name for themselves and pull off some incredible shots. Yeah, it's been great to watch some of these teams so far, and we're not done just yet. That'll be it for me today. Turtle, you still got a busy day ahead. But yes, sir. I'm going to be dipping out of here, but we still have more <laughs> Rocket League. I'm going to be watching as we be watching, will bro. be right back. We are going to get our next match set up. We're going to have Sonics versus Valence coming up for you guys. Don't go anywhere. This is a BTS Rocket League.